Dear guests, good afternoon. It's my pleasure to attend CTBUH conference to share with you and also discuss with you about our view on tall building and urban development, the relationship between the two. Recently, Shenzhen has organized a lot of events, so Tim Cook just left, then you are here. So, so many experts come into Shenzhen. Uh, this has added a lot of glory and uh, touch for Shenzhen. I noticed this time f the conference is of big size. Yesterday there was an opening ceremony. I was also there. On behalf of Shenzhen municipal government, I wish everybody here you will get quite good impression on Shenzhen. Yesterday, due to time limit, I did not have further elaboration about Shenzhen. So today, the chair gave me about 25 minutes of the time. So he emphasized it should be within 20 minutes in the past. Therefore, I want to be concise. So five minutes, uh, uh, that will be the free time for me to further elaborate. I'm an urban planner. To, so today, actually, a lot of guests are architects. In the past years, I worked in the government for the planning department. I uh, have a lot of de dealings with architects. So for today's discussion, so we can see this is discussion between the planner and the architect. Or communication between the government authority, design firm, and developers. So this is just my personal opinion. So, so many of the opinions actually is also discussed, shared with my colleagues. So the, the pictures I prepared, they are not so beautiful as you draw. I just uh, got it from other locations. It's not my own drawing. But the text uh, is prepared by us. So t the topic for today's presentation is about speed and altitude. The urban development and the high-rise building in Shenzhen. Here, high-rise building, I have uh, skipped the ultra-high, ultra-tall building. Because the conference you are talking about the super tall building. For Chinese, one say high rise. Actually, it's even it's short. We still call it high rise. So that, so this time for the conference is mainly focused on the very tall buildings. I add the subtitle of speed and altitude because this is also analogy to Shenzhen's development about speed and altitude. I think it's for the. There is a certain inner connection between urban development and high-rise building. As the host, first of all, I will briefly share, uh, dis uh, discuss with you about our city. In your presentation, normally you will talk about your own company, about your masterpiece. So also I would like to introduce to you about Shenzhen first. So for vertical city, for high-rise building, because you are lack of ground space, therefore you develop towards the upper space. That means this place, it has a large population uh, with limited land resources. Uh, to have a high-rise building, you need to have a certain economic strength and economic power. Shenzhen has all those uh, conditions available. As, uh, so what you saw Shenzhen today, it, it, it only had about 36 years of history. Now, Shenzhen's economic power in the whole country is already uh, among the top, just next to Beijing, Shanghai. Compared to Guangzhou, basically no big gap. But for the city space, we have very limited small space here in Shenzhen. So the, 
the light blue that is Hong Kong. We are just a smaller, a little bigger than Hong Kong. We are no more than 2,000 uh, square kilometers for the population here. It's not an accurate number. So actually, the population of Shenzhen for, people, for the permanent residents already close to 20 million. That means for the city, for per square kilometer, close to 20,000. Uh, this is actually, actually the city with the largest uh, popul, uh, population density. So for this high-rise uh, building topic, no one city can and uh, compare to Shenzhen, which is uh, closer to the high-rise building here. So here I have two photos. I believe if you are not familiar with Shenzhen, but through these two photos, you can feel the, the contrast between the two. 30 years ago, Shenzhen, and 30 years later, indeed, there is big change. That was at the beginning of the Shenzhen construction. Now uh, there are clusters of different tall buildings with quite good lighting effects. That's the new s scenario. So about the building height, the quantities, here we have some number. The tallest uh, iconic building is the Ping An Finance, uh, Financial Center. They also have their show uh, today. So we have more than six buildings with the uh, with the height more than 300 meters. So my colleague also find, found a, a, a cartoon that was one designer. So it showed, last year he put the world tall buildings. He made a drawing. Here, including two buildings of Shenzhen. So we are very happy that Shenzhen become the member of global high-rise building family. So the conference selects Shenzhen as the hosting place. I think it's also very important to show the connection. In terms of uh, high-rise development in Shenzhen from two dimensions, I would like to have briefly explanation. One is about the time pro, time. The first tall building was built in 1980. At that time, it was only 70 meters, more than a little more than 70 meters. At that time, it was already very tall in China, which is electronic building. You cannot find it now, but. It was the tallest building at that time in China. Through the timeline, we can see there will be more and more buildings. The height has been increased uh, more and more. So Ping An Financial Center, the previous plan was 663 meters. Then later on, because of the area height limit, uh, then it was reduced down to 600 meters. Therefore, it cannot be the, the first the largest tall building, or tallest building in China. Ping An uh, has the ambition to, become, to have this tallest building in China. Now, for many companies, including the government, we are planning to continue for construction of tall buildings. How tall will it be? Currently, it's hard for us to, to determine. Yes, we understand. There will be the plan for the higher uh, high-rise buildings, which is ongoing at the moment. In terms of, in terms of spatial distribution for the high-rise building in Shenzhen, it's, it has its own features. Shenzhen is a city with a cluster style of belt strip. The city structure like the strip with the different clusters. For each cluster, it has a, its own center from Luohu, Futian to Nanshan. Now what we show here is the red dot. They are the center of different clusters. Of course, for big ones, it's like Futian CBD. 
it's interesting that for the tall buildings, high-rise buildings, the main tall uh, high-rise building over the past few years, they are constructed along this main boulevard, which is called Shenan Boulevard. Gradually, from east extend to the west or in the future, there will be more of such high-rise buildings. This is for the spatial distribution. For those high-rise buildings, they have reflected the city development progress. Meanwhile, it has shown the level improvement of the city development. High-rise building, they are very important landmark of a city. Meanwhile, for, Shenzhen, uh, for the, the urban culture, it's uh, also an icon. For example, in the early stage, this high-rise building, we call it state uh, trading building, it was constructed at th uh, three days for each floor. Th that was the miracle, construction miracle of China at that time. It was the early stage of Shenzhen as the landmark building. Then it has become the symbol for Shenzhen, also even China's reform and opening up. Therefore, our chief designer of reform and opening up, Mr. Deng Xiaoping, he came to Shenzhen twice. Each time he would uh, climb to the building. So in 1984, when the building was under construction, he came here. Then in 1992, on this building, he gave the very important speech about the tour in South, South China, further promote the reform of China. So you can see that this building is quite iconic, not only for the construction, but for the building itself. It's the uh, connotation, the meaning it contains is very important. Of course, now the building is quite old. Uh, has lost its glory. I remember when people came to Shenzhen, they they would go to people would go to the uh, so-called rotating restaurant in Shenzhen uh, in this building on top to have the morning so-called morning tea to prove it. yes now I'm in Shenzhen but now the building is declining. How to address the issue? That's also one topic for us to address. I think uh, our architects here can help us with that idea of outdated buildings. And so in addition to Guoma Tower, we also have the, the Shanghing Square, Kinki 100, Ping An Finance Center. As you can see, the altitude has been climbing and go, going up. And it also reflects the technology you use in construction. For instance, in Shanghing Square, the construction of this tower is creating a very slim a slim uh, sheet-like structure. We introduced the technology from the Japanese and constructed by Hong Kong contractor. And then in Kinki 100 Tower, the de architectural design of the tower and the construction process used in this project are at a higher level compared with the Shanghai Square. And today we have Ping An Financial Center I think that's, that reflects the top-notch technology we are currently using in, in the country in terms of its typology and construction technology used. So we're briefly, let's look at the high rises. So in addition to the relationship to urban planning and its distribution spatially and timely, we need to look at the relationship with urban planning more closely. And we have some uh, case studies in the time sequence where we can make reference to the first one here. There are actually two groups of pictures, two from Shenzhen. One is a uh, bird view, another one is uh, for the elevation view. And this is Hong Kong, and this is uh, Luo Hu, in the neighborhood of this hotel. And in, in the early days, Luo Hu is hosting the most high 
crisis in Shenzhen. It's it's a high intensity and density distribution of the top buildings. Very simple. And in the 80s, we have made reference to Hong Kong because it's close to Shenzhen. And we thought Hong Kong represents the quality. And uh, most of the contractors and developers or architects are actually also from Hong Kong. That's a typical approach we used in Luohu district. And then in the 90s, we have a planned the Futian CBD. This is an administrative, commercial, and cultural center of the city. It's no longer like Hong Kong. It's no longer high density, uh, tall buildings. And it starts from a traditional central axis of China using grids in the urban planning process. And in the middle, we have reserved a land of green as a green corridor. So the high rises have a more opener view of the landscape. And in spatial typology, despite the symmetrical axis of the city, but you see the buildings on both sides may not necessarily be the same in terms of the height. So we did purposefully to diversify the altitude. So on both directions, north to south and east to west, you can see different profiles in the skyline. And uh, the urban planner at the time used the, the Chinese feng shui to describe it. It's like two dragons on both sides. So that means good feng shui in this neighborhood. Third case study is the Hohai CBD. Hohai CBD is like an extension of a Fu Tian in terms of the open space, but it's uh, more freely arranged spatially. We take the advantage of the water feature of Shenzhen Bay, and we actually excavated a lake in the middle to make sure it's open public space on the water. So the tall buildings in the neighborhood could have a better environment. So we have a landmarks here like uh, the bamboo shoot and we also have Shenzhen Bay number one apartments that is the CBD in Sa in National District Hohai region the fourth case study is in Shanghai we know Shanghai represents the future of Shenzhen it's the the newest CBD of the city and we call it Shenzhen Hong Kong Cooperative Zone. So it's it's forward looking. And this is actually the winner of the urban planning, JCFO from the US. And they used the uh, urban landscape uh, landscaping urbanism. They stresses the ecosystem in the neighborhood instead of focusing on the buildings itself. So they, they give us some rendering on the board buildings in the urban planning process, but it's vague. It's not very clear. The concept here is to make sure the water features can be introduced inside into the city as much as possible, where we can, they're using some green fingers with water and landscaping features to create clusters. So that means the space surrounding the clusters are more open to give you a more friendly ecosystem in the city. And this plan is being implemented as we speak. And many tall buildings in the region is also under construction. I believe many of the 
many of the people in the floor are actually working in this region right now. Another one we haven't implemented on is the case studies in the super headquarter base in Shenzhen Bay. As we said, the city has been f distributed along many centers and many clusters. This is the last and the largest Greenland of downtown area of Shenzhen. It's going to be very important, and that's why we call it a super headquarter base. And we're trying to attract more of those high-end businesses, hence the name super. And we are currently deliberating on the urban planning in this region. We had a international competition as well for that uh, region. Many international organizations and of young ar architects have been involved in the competition, and they have sometimes very uh, surreal imagination for this region. And we didn't have the first prize. That means uh, we do not have a clear winner. But actually, those competitors are giving us more space for imagination. It's, it's kind of related to the vertical city we have been talking about for these two days. But that's an open question. For high rises in the future, what is the direction going forward? I believe many experts are discussing that for these couple of days. And we as we also talked to our colleagues with regard to this topic, and I also have some UK studies to sh share with you what we are thinking inside our organization. The first one is the Shenzhen Security Exchange, which has been constructed and put into use. The architect being Mr. Kuhas. And he elevated the podium to open the ground space to public so citizens can enjoy it. So it's not a traditional way of uh, dealing with the podium. This concept has actually touched us very much. That's why he's the winner of this project, and this has been constructed. However, despite a good concept it is, but it's not as good as he's described in the real life. Not pe people are not actually walking under the podium. Of course, it's related to the administration process, but we know architects always tell good stories. The second case study is one Ke Center. It's, this is designed by Stephen Hall. He told us that this is going to be a lying down giant. So it's a high rise, but it's lying down. In Damisha, we want to control the height of the bu buildings. It has, it cannot be high, but he actually said this is a high rise lying down. I believe Mr. Stephen Hall uh, likes his work because another work piece of his cannot be implemented. But you know, I think we like this building not because it's a lying down high rise, but because it has a lot of open space underneath where those spaces can change our mindset toward gigantic uh, structures. So what, is, what it, does it have to do with the high rises? So we compared these two buildings. This is Van Ke Hall, and this is the Shenzhen Stock Exchange, and we splice them together. So if we can combine these two, it could make a very interesting scheme. So instead of going up in the sky, the podiums of the high rises can be connected together, where people can work on the top, leaving the ground space to transportation, or traditional cultural events, or you can pre also pr protect good, amicable environments. 
and uh, that's the inspiration we've drawn from those two projects. Another case study is uh, for a is from a local architect of Shenzhen, Mr. Liu Xiaodu. So on Shenzhen Biennale, he has done some research for the future of Shenzhen. And this is his uh, installment in Lun London architectural exhibition this year. And he has uh, conceived a utopia of for the Shenzhen future. First of all, the buildings are diversified, residential, office, building, commercial, so leisure, entertainment. It's diversified, and it's also a gigantic structure. And of course, this gigantic structure could leave more space for the ecology system in the city. And we think this is very interesting research, and it's uh, highly recognized by people on the BNL. So for high-rise buildings, we know it's playing a very important role in the city, in any city. It's an uh, expression of technology, and it's also expression of the city itself. So for a city like Shenzhen, it's high rises actually showcases the energy and the spirit of the city. And in the future, I believe there will be more and more high rises in Shenzhen because we don't have the land, we have so many population, and the economy is still growing at a constant pace. So in urban planning, we have uh, drafted this map talking about the density of the buildings in the city. And we had, uh, in our urban plan, we believe the skyline height of the, and altitude of the skyline need to be planned. And this map is also showing the clusters of the city. In each cluster, there are places where you are putting high rises. So that means it's not concentrated in one center. It's actually scattered around many centers except the airport region, where the height can, cannot be too much. Finally, I have three summaries for you. Firstly, through the previous presentation, I think Shenzhen is a miracle of urban development. What's more, for high-rise building construction, it's a, a pioneer city for the experiment research and exploration, we are quite open-minded. We support the imagination like for the uh, architect uh, like uh, Kuhas and also Stephen Hall as like a lying down high-rise building. We also accept other different kinds of explorations. So you can say Shenzhen is a pioneering city for that. Secondly, to respond to the theme of this conference, we think that vertical city will, for, for such a uh, mega city like Shenzhen, it will be the future trend of development. It will become more diversified, uh, three-dimensional, and also to have the large complex for the direction, uh, trend. Finally, I think uh, high-rise buildings, from the planning perspective, from government perspective, we hope the architects can pay more attention to the urban cultural features. In the past, when, when, we, when we discussed one scheme, I discussed this with the KPF architect. I said, you have designed so many high-rise buildings for the world. Can you explain to us for our city your story of designing high-rise buildings? You should tell, tell, tell me a story. Architect. It seems that uh, they are not so uh, active for that. So I hope we can hand this over to architect to think about it. Combined with the natural environment of the city, how to, how to link this with them, how to reflect the local culture. 
for each high-rise building, actually, I pay close attention. Not only high-rise building, but also same for other buildings. High-rise building is so iconic and landmark. I think that is the issue that we need to address. Finally, for the spa uh, spatial skyline of the city, it's, it's providing very important support. It will become the landmark of the city, as described earlier. So for high-rise development, we think it is very important. We pay great attention. We also hope the exp experts here for Shenzhen, for our future high-rise building development, you can give your valuable suggestions. You are also welcome to give your contributions of more work. Thank you.